All right, hey everybody. Uh, I know it's been a while since I've done just a regular video for you guys. Thank you for putting up with all the live streams and announcements and things like that recently. But um, I thought I would hop on and do a video that I've been meaning to do for a while, actually. Um, a few weeks ago, you guys may have seen if you're kind of part of the, you know, geek, nerd, cosplay, you know, internet actor sort of spheres, you may have seen that uh, Chloe Dykstra um, came out and said, uh, a lot of things about being in a relationship with Chris Hardwick that uh, she described as being emotionally abusive. And um, I don't want to talk about that subject, not that subject, but I don't want to talk about their situation in particular, but that got the gears turning and it's a really good topic to talk about emotional abuse. I find that a lot of times the focus is on physical abuse or sexual abuse, which they can all play together certainly in a problematic relationship or an abusive relationship. Um, but the emotional abuse aspects of it are, te they tend to be a little more insidious, a little more sneaky. And they're things that a lot of people may find are harder to recognize and they may feel more like they are responsible for those things rather than, you know, if they're hit, sometimes it's easier for people to recognize that that is not their fault. The emotional abuse side is a little bit more tricky. So I wanted to talk about uh, just five signs of emotional abuse. These are not the only signs. Uh, they may not even be the most common signs, but these are ones that I see often in my clinical work. Um, I, I do see people who have been in abusive relationships or are in abusive relationships. Um, I'm not working explicitly with just those types of people, but I have them come through my practice. And in the past, I have worked in different agencies that deal with that specifically, um, uh, specifically a place called the Family Violence Center, where I would see people who were in abusive relationships trying to get help or resources. So I have some degree of you know, familiarity with this. So let's talk about some of the signs. Okay, so the first one that I want to touch on is isolation. So isolation is a huge part of many different types of abusive relationships and especially emotionally abusive relationships. And isolation is really just what it sounds like. It's trying to get you away from other people. So when the abuser is in a relationship with somebody, their goal is to make sure that they are not influenced by other people. So the, the abuser will want to disconnect them from supports or people on the outside that might be um, noticing there's a problem there. So oftentimes this is like family or close friends that you've had for a long time. The abuser will want to get that person away from them, remove that influence so that they're not threatened. Because if you spend time with your best friend who you've had forever that can tell this is a problematic relationship, they might influence you and help you understand that this is something you need to get out of. Same with your family. A lot of times in abusive relationships, family is cut off and it's difficult because the family will um, want to respect your wishes to be in the relationship, but will also want to intervene in some way if they think it's problematic. And so the abuser will cut those ties. And in this day and age, it can take a lot of different forms, right? Um, in the past, that was just, you know, literally uh, keeping somebody away physically. But now it has a lot more to do with social media contact and things like that. So maybe requesting that you block a friend or family member on Facebook or checking your texts to make sure you're not talking to somebody. There's a lot of different forms of isolation, but isolation is often key in any type of abusive relationship. Again, to kind of protect that sphere of influence and, um, just control that this abusive person has over you. So isolation is definitely one main thing to look out for. Another sort of form of, of control, and I'll talk more about control explicitly here, but um, one thing to look out for, another sign is rules. So any relationship is gonna have some boundaries, it's gonna have some guidelines, you might call them rules. There's gonna be things that are okay to do and not okay to do. Ideally in a well-functioning relationship, these are things that are uh, talked about. These are things that are discussed. These are things that are negotiated. You know, you talk about them together and you decide sort of what are your, your boundaries, your loose guidelines for the relationship, which is very helpful. But in an emotionally abusive relationship, there are hard and fast rules set in place. And they're not for the purpose of promoting, you know, the health of the relationship and the health of each individual. They're for the purpose of one person's agenda, the abuser's agenda. And sometimes they're actually quite arbitrary. Sometimes there are rules that don't really serve a purpose other than letting this person establish some control over you. 
So it could be really random things like you're not allowed to eat until I've eaten or you're not allowed to um, go to the movies without me. You're not allowed to um, you know, eat out without me. You're not allowed to go to this place or go to that place. Uh, it can be very random, right? It, it could be things like setting a curfew for you or um, you have a certain bedtime. You have to be in bed at this time or you have to get up at this time. Setting these just you know, sometimes arbitrary, sometimes very specific for a given purpose rules. When I say specific for a given purpose, it might be you know you have to go to bed at this time so that I can go do whatever or you're not allowed to go out so that I can make sure you're staying away from this person. Whatever it may be, uh, establishing these hard and fast rules and not giving any leeway on that is definitely a sign of an abusive, emotionally abusive relationship. Now I talked about control a little bit, but control in general is another sign you want to look out for. Um, somebody who is an abuser in, a, in an emotionally abusive relationship is going to be wanting to establish control over the other person. And that can look like a lot of different ways. Um, one thing that I want to point out though is that it can look like trying to be nice or chivalrous sometimes. For instance, take a scenario where um, a person and their abusive partner are out to dinner. Um, the abusive partner might seem like they're trying to be very uh, like chivalrous. They might order for them. They might say what they're going to be drinking. They might make all the decisions. And rather than trying to be nice and whatever, that's actually a form of control. They're trying to make sure they do this. They're trying to make sure they do that. And they're trying to take the other person's control out of the scenario. Um, it's not that they're opening the door for them. It's that they're giving them permission to get out. Right. So there's some subtle differences there. And when you find that any pushback against that is met with resistance. So if the person says, actually, no, they try to quiet them down. They try to silence them. They try to say, no, 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 I, let me do this. Right. So when you try to push back a little bit and have your own free will, um, if there's resistance against that and there's some you know, nastiness or whatever happens, that's a sign that there's actually just control going on and it's not whatever other thing you want to call it. You know, chivalrous is, is the term I'm coming up with, but there may be a better term for it. I think it's kind of bullshit either way. But, you know, there's definitely a difference between somebody making an effort to try to be, you know, cool and, and make decisions because they want to show that they have the capability to do so rather than making decisions because they don't want the other person to make decisions. So control is another thing to watch out for. Um, the fourth one is guilt and shaming. This is a big part in any type of abusive relationship, especially with emotionally abusive relationships. It's a type of control and manipulation that happens where the person who is the abuser will try to turn things around onto the person who is being abused. For instance, um, in like a physically abusive relationship, a lot of times if they hit them, they'll say, you know how I get, why did you say that? You know I get like this, this is your fault. I told you not to talk about that, otherwise I blow my top. And very similarly, that happens in emotionally abusive relationships, right? Um, you know, somebody might uh, try to guilt them or shame them, them being the other person, by saying something like, you know what, if you don't stop talking to this person, I'm going to kill myself because I can't handle you, you know, embarrassing us like that. Or, you know, you know how I get, I, I can't control myself, and if you don't pay attention to me in these areas or you don't do what I say, I don't know, maybe, I'll, maybe I'm going to leave because I can't take it. You know, threats and things like that that turn it back on the other person. Now, of course, there's a lot of layers to this, right? In terms of um, does the person have mental health issues? Do they both have mental health issues? Something like, for instance, borderline personality disorder can certainly have sort of explosive moments of, of anger or of kind of lapses in judgment. Um, oftentimes there is that sort of tit for tat, like getting back at somebody uh, element to it. But we're talking about sort of a persistent characteristic of the relationship and something that, again, when you try to push back against it, there's resistance there. So often you're going to see this guilt and shaming. The person who is being emotionally abused will think for a very long time that this is their fault, that you know they're screwing things up, that they're going to lose this person, and if they don't comply with these rules, um, it's going to be their fault for, for not knowing the terms of the relationship and ruining things which you know, from the outside can really sound like ridiculous. Like, of course that's not the case. But when you're in it, when you're in sort of that eye of the storm, it's really, really, really hard to get that perspective, which goes back to the isolation thing, right? That's why they want to keep you isolated because when you get any sort of outside input, sometimes it's clear as day, like, oh my God, of course this isn't my fault. Of course this is abusive, but that's a risk that they don't want to take. So the isolation occurs, all right? So we have isolation, rules, control, 
guilt and shaming. And the last one I will say is uh, constant checking. Uh, this falls, you know, under similar categories to the other ones. But uh, so constant checking, meaning checking your phone, checking to see who you've messaged online, calling to see where you're at. This is another one of those that can seem like it's somebody being uh, concerned about the relationship or trying to be loving, right? Hi, honey, what are you doing? That's good. But if it's, hi, honey, what are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? You didn't answer. What are you doing? Where are you? When are you coming home? Et cetera, et cetera that becomes possibly abusive, right? That pattern of needing to know where somebody is to keep checks on them, to keep tabs on them. Uh, that's something that very, very, very often comes up and, and sneaks up in one of those ways where it seems like it's something good, but you realize this person actually is trying to control my behavior by checking on it. Um, that, like I said, this can happen through social media, you know, with your phone, uh, physically like tracking your location on your phone. You know, um, they, they may say, oh, well, everybody does this and I want to see where you're at. Uh, but really they're trying to keep tabs on you to make sure they know exactly where you are at any point in time to make you feel like if you're not there, you did something wrong. Like you're the one being suspicious. Like you're the one being uh, unfaithful or something like that because you're not where you should be at a given time right? So be wary of that constant checking. And those are just five of the things that I think that people should look out for um, with regard to abusive, emotionally abusive relationships. So attempts to isolate you, setting up rules, very, very hard and fast rules that are sometimes just arbitrary without any real purpose aside from control. Um, attempts to control your behavior by doing things for you or not allowing you to do certain things. Guilt, shaming, turning things around on you to make you feel guilty and then constant checking and keeping tabs on you. Uh, if you have anything else that you'd like to add, anything from your personal experience or things that you've seen in others, things that you think are indicative of you know, problematic relationships or emotionally abusive relationships, please do share them in the comments. You know, I, I do know a bit about this, but I certainly haven't covered everything there is to cover here. So if I missed anything or there's anything that you would like to add, definitely share it in the comments. And of course, as always, let me know if there's a certain topic that's related to this or not that you'd like me to cover in a video just like this. Thanks guys.